on Hulu, I watched, was this for 1997 or 90? I, I think it was 97. The Mask of Zorro, which has aged really well due to lack of shitty CGI. This is directed by the very competent director, Martin Campbell, who gave us two of the better James Bond movies, GoldenEye and Casino Royale. Now, um, we start off, we're in uh, Mexico in some time. This guy was named Don Vega. Uh, he's, uh, he's Zorro, all right? Played by Anthony Hopkins, you know, because he looks Hispanic. And he's swashbuckling, he saves the lives of some people that were going to be executed just to lure him out of hiding. He's, he's a famous swashbuckler dressed in black, has a mask, a hat, marks a Z on people and shit, and stabs a lot of dudes. He, he's up to high adventure here, and it's kind of Hollywood throwback stuff, like a Douglas Fairbanks type situation. And there's some good shots. It looks good. It sounds good. Everything's working here. I believe that um, Steven Spielberg was one of the producers. And he wanted Shakira, before she was a name really, to play the love interest in this. Well, I'll get to that in a bit. Well, the guy heads home to his basic castle where he has the bat cave where his stallion, what, tornado uh, parks instead of the Batmobile. Uh, goes and uh, tells his daughter a story. His wife's like, ah, oh, that's dangerous. Oh, but I've retired now. Oh, have you? The bad guy, the governor of Mexico, he overhears this, tries to have him arrested, fights a bit, and the skirmisher guy draws a gun, shoots Elena, I think's her name, D uh, Don Vega's wife. She dies. Governor's pissed, kills that dude. Has Anthony Hopkins locked up. Oh, you're gonna know what it's like. See, see she, she was my girl, this would have been my daughter, now she's my daughter and you're gonna live with that. You know, decent revenge there. Some stuff doesn't really add up. Like we skip ahead and there were these two boys that were, that helped Zorro slightly by dropping a statue on some dudes and helping him escape earlier during that little skirmish. And um, they're, they're like scoundrels, they're bandits. Um, we have a, what, some Union soldier chasing after them. Uh, this uh, Santa Ana has this war with the, uh, with the United States and he needs some money. They've, they found this gold mine. This guy, uh, the governor who was exiled, he's come back. He's controlling the gold mine, gonna sell the gold to Santa Ana who doesn't know it's there. Not a bad scheme. But in the, all of this, he loses track of Anthony Hopkins. He has him in a prison. He's looking for him, walks right past him. It's like, who, which one are you, Zorro? All these guys in the prison claim to be Zorro. Anthony Hopkins ends up uh, escaping and he meets up with Antonio Banderas, whose brother was killed, his other partner shot, and he wants revenge on this Captain Love, I believe is his name. Captain Love Train, Love Train, people all the world, join hands. Antonio Banderas gonna get his revenge. He's just some regular low-life thief scoundrel has no charm, no class. Oh, but old Zorro can teach him up. Says, hey, you got this necklace that Zorro gave you for saving him earlier, huh? Yeah, I did. Oh, well, you know what? I can help you get your revenge on Captain Love. You know, I'm gonna train you up. I'm the real Zorro. Let me show you my bat cave. All this shit. And it's like, all right, train him up. Our montage is a little too quick. He teaches them some things. It seems as though no time at all passes. And then he goes on this raid. He's gonna go steal a horse, I guess, from the stable. He's gonna get a horse that's, that's like his old horse. In doing so, he runs across Catherine Zeta-Jones, who looks pretty cute here. Um, 
for some reason back in the day I thought she didn't look that great. She looks fairly all right. But uh, this was one of her big star making roles. This really put her high on the map. Uh, before this no one knew who she was. After this everybody knew who she was. There's things that she does in this movie. Like she gets in a, in a sword match with Zoro. Uh, he strips her of her clothes. Everybody thought that was hot. She does redeeming things. You know, she, she discovers that she's actually the daughter of Anthony Hopkins and um, the evil governor have been lying to her. He's going to kill all the people that mine the gold. But eventually all the good guys team up, uh, fight him off. There's good explosions, fights, everything you could want in a Zorro movie. Surely this is the best Zorro movie. Um, I don't really understand how Anthony Hopkins got lost in the prison system, but uh, you know he's he's getting his revenge too. And during all this, he takes some shots, I think, and eventually bleeds out after the final victory of the movie. Um, and then it's like, oh shit, Zorro died, but oh, but there's a new Zorro. So Zora lives on, and then we're repeating, you know, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Now they've got their castle, and uh, he's singing a bedtime story to, or telling a bedtime story to his kid, who I think might be a son, he's talking about his grandfather, and all this. And yeah, I guess that works out well for our thief, but I felt like he was missing out on the training here. You know, give me more time lapse. He got charmed up in the course of no time. Oh, you need to learn some charms so that you can infiltrate. Act like you're this, uh, you're this royal correspondent. Okay, you'll just go in and then everybody will believe that. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, what if, what if the bad guy recognized you? Oh, they don't look at servants in the eye. I'm practically camouflage. It's almost like Count of, Count of Monte Cristo here. And yeah, Catherine Zia-Jones was falling for for uh, charming Antonio Banderas, but secretly also for Zorro. When she finds out they're both the same guy, she's definitely into him, and he's being groomed by her dad to bang his daughter. Ultimate sign of approval, right? I guess that's really the point of the movie. A former crime fighter grooms assistant to bang daughter. This is a pretty good movie. There's not a lot to complain about. You know, in addition, I would say that some of the action's cartoonish. Uh, when he, when Zoro is taking on like a stable full of guys who just plain don't want to kill him, it seems. You know, like some of them, like Jackie Chan fights, where it's like people are just, well, boom, pause, wait for this reaction here. I'm gonna wait to get hit. You know, that's kind of a problem with some of the Jackie Chan stuff. Is it seemed like people weren't fighting back; they were waiting to get hit. And that's kind of like the way it is here in the Zorro action at times, too. Well, I'll just do my thing, and I'll stand over here, and then this is that. But it's still a good movie. Yeah, I give The Mask of Zorro three out of four stars.